In this video, I'm going to teach you step by step how to wedge and prepare your clay for throwing on the pottery wheel. Everything from ram's head wedging to spiral wedging. And I'm going to show you some tips to prepare it for the next step. Timestamps are in the description below if you want to jump into one or the other. All right, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your clay is the right consistency. You want it soft and malleable. You should easily be able to press into the clay. If not, you should go back and find some softer clay. Clay that's too hard and stiff can cause damage to the wrist and even cause the clay to crack while you're starting to wedge it. The first type of wedging that we're going to talk about is called ram's head wedging because as you can see here, it looks a little bit like a ram's head. The goal of every type of wedging is to remove air bubbles and to incorporate harder and softer pieces into your clay to make it more even and consistent. It should be noted here that clay that comes from a bag or a pug mill should not need to be wedged. To start wedging, grab a ball of clay and with two hands and straight arms, press forward into the clay using your weight as momentum and strength. It should look something like this. After that, you're going to roll the ball back up to the point using your palms like you see me doing here, and you're going to repeat the process over and over again. As you continue, this motion will get more fluid and the clay will begin to fold in on itself. Here you can see me doing this a little bit slower so that you can see what my hands are doing. Here are a couple things to keep in mind. Make sure that you're rolling the ball of clay up to the point like you see me showing here and then pressing down and through. The other common mistake that I see a lot of people do is that they don't press on the sides of the clay as they're rolling them up. You're using your palms to press in on the side of the clay as you're pressing down and through. So we're starting to get this ram's head shape, but watch what happens as I slow this down. I press, release, pull back, and then press again while maintaining pressure on the sides. Here's what this looks like from a top side view. And again from a front view. This takes just a lot of practice and repetition. The more you practice, the better you get at it, and the more fluid your movements become. I would do this until you feel like the air bubbles are removed from your clay and that the clay is fully incorporated. This can take varying amounts of time depending on the size of the clay. It can be a short process or a really long process. Here you can see me showing what it's like when you don't hold the sides of the clay with your palm, the clay just shoots out of the sides. Don't do that. And then again, showing it the right way. When the clay has been fully wedged, shorten your wedging motion so that you form it into a burrito. From there, you want to slap or mold this into a ball or a cone because that will make it a lot easier when you go to put it on the wheel and center it. The next common type of wedging is called spiral wedging, and it looks something like this when you're doing it. Spiral wedging is great for large amounts of clay because of the rocking motion you can get into. I personally think it's a little bit easier on your shoulders and body. Spiral wedging gets its name from the spiral shell shape that you see here. To get started spiral wedging, take a ball of clay and press it forward, just like you did for ram's head wedging and like you see here. Then pull the clay back and turn it about 30 to 15 degrees to your left. Release and readjust your hands and press forward again, continuing this motion over and over. The turning is probably one of the most important parts of this movement. It allows the clay to become fully incorporated and gives you that spiral shape. You can see here how I pull the clay back rotate, readjust my hands, and press. And that's the motion that you're looking for. You push, pull back, rotate, adjust, adjust, and press again. Here from the side view, you can see the rotation of the clay and how I readjust my hand at the top of the motion. Here's a cool visual example to see how the clay is incorporated. If I take a pencil and I poke it into the clay, it should rotate all the way around that spiral and back up into the clay. So here's how it goes. 
I'll press, rotate, press, rotate. And you can see the pencil moving its way around the clay in that arc as I continue to wedge through until it comes all the way back around to the front. Once you've wedged this to the point where you feel like all of the clay is incorporated and the air bubbles are gone, you're gonna do the same thing that we did for ram's head wedging. You're gonna shorten the movements and you're going to round this out into a cone shape. Now again, you don't want any of those bumps on the surface, so you're gonna slap out all the bumps or just smooth them out prior to putting it on the wheel. You can also rotate it on the tabletop like I'm doing here to get the bottom to round a little bit. Now your clay is prepped and ready for the pottery wheel. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe and stay tuned for upcoming videos on how to throw and center. If you're interested, check out this video on how to make lidded jars. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Now you're ready. Sig it over the wheel.